and of course full inventory so we're here for the go what's up frost bros welcome back to the arena playthrough it is currently part 29 and in the last episode we went ahead to Ebenhart Morrowind and we basically went to the king and spoke with him found a certain hammer you may wonder well what would we need that hammer for well let's just say that in today's episode we're going to be exploring a very special region and if you've seen my Morrowind playthrough you know exactly what region I'm talking about and of course if you've seen the last episode you know exactly you know I'm just gonna shout about that uh what we have to do right now is of course not text on the side of the screen that's barbaric uh we're gonna have to go to the temple all the way south so yeah that's gonna be quite a journey of course the music here is just wondrous but of course we can just run along the side here and i guess we can uh, do a little chat so of course the one year anniversary of my channel is actually uh coming up soon so i do think i'm gonna get something good and uploaded for that i'm probably gonna do like a little uh one hour chill session of literally just me talking about frost trolls or something like that who knows but anyways we're now here at the temple that was quite a quite an arduous journey if i do say so myself arduous arduous what's the word it's not like I play D&D &D or anything. As you enter the audience chamber of the King of Ebonheart, you feel the autumn chill from the outside is actually intensified within. The thick furs of and darkly beautiful ornaments that decorate the walls make you feel as though you're being watched. King Cassock looks up from the conference he is having with the Council of Evans. Uh-oh, I uh, interrupted King Cassock's council, though, you know, he's probably having council with someone not that important, since there's literally no one here other than his guards. So, yeah, uh, yo, Cassock, I found your hammer. Well done, Sindar Treth. You have done the realm a service it will not easily forget. Smiths across the land will hail your arrival. No. Garin onto an anvil, listening intently as a slow smile spreads across his features gesturing to you, he inscribes the location of the entrance to Dagothur, somewhere in the northern part of Morland, onto your map. That's right. We're about to go speak with Dagothur himself. No, not really, but we're about to go to the ruins, and I mean, <laughs> yeah. It's quite an event if i do say so myself because i mean we're going to we're going to head all the way up to dagother itself i mean the red mountain itself i mean even the logo is travel destination i was trying to hit exit and i mean the red mountain can even be seen from okay there's pollution in the sky at the moment probably from red mountain Man, this is Morrowind, Dana. <laughs> like, let me tell you about Morrowind, huh? Yeah, but anyways, if we do go to Dagothur, we would, of course, still be kind of overloaded from our last trip. So, you know, we do have a, at least a few things we could probably unload first. So, you know, maybe a, here real quick, we can see. Let's see here. We have a plus minus four bracelet. None of these are upgrades. Crystals and marks are useless, so yeah, I got a bunch of stuff to sell. So, we're going to do a quick speed ahead real quick of just a selling montage. 
So I'll catch you all after that, and then we'll head to Dagoth Earth. Just went through a selling montage. We got a good bit more gold now. And of course our inventory is a bit clearer. And now I do think it is time for us to make our way to Dagother. So let's see. Dagother in Morrowind Province. The date is Sunday 6th of Frostfall in the year 3391. Based on the current weather, it will take 17 days to travel here. The total distance is 600 kilometers. You should arrive by Midas 23rd of Frostfall in the year 3391. Sounds good. Let's head there. <clears throat> Dagothur welcomes you now all to the Splash Point. Dagothur, the sacred entrance of the Dwarven Smiths into the Fire Mountain. Dagothur stands before you. Magical runes glow in the red fire lit shimmering with heat. Sulfurous gouts of steam escape from vents within the rock face of the opening. The final piece of the Staff of Chaos beckons. And let's get ready. So of course we're going to get ourselves a good buffing routine. And as you can see, we just did Armor of Mephala. And that barely did anything. Like seriously, we have so we can we can stack so oh you into the fire mountain Dagothur around you the air shimmers with heat even the stone floor is warm to the touch yeah even though like those spells cost so much we have gained so many buffs we have gained so much power over the time that we can literally just get our buffing routine done without the need of all that much. I mean, we're just over here really just powerhousing through this. And I mean, we may as well get some of Azura's aid in here. We can get some Mephala's Wrath ready. Go ahead. Yeah, refill my mana. Oop, Ghost is paralyzed. Nothing usable. And I don't know what activated it, but uh, now I have fast text instead of slow text, which is kind of cool. Kind of makes the game run a little faster. Makes things a little more useful. Like these ghosts with nothing usable. Though it is funny that I can paralyze, kill them, and loot them, despite the fact that they're unlootable. By nature, at least. Now, of course, we're here in the... Yeah, you see, there's lava paths and... Stuff like stone golems behind doors. You know, guys, you really don't want to mess with under normal circumstances, but... You know, here we are. Casting the Fuller's Wrath, which... Under normal circumstances, we should not be casting due to being a healer, but, you know, we're not necessarily normal. We kind of, no, no need to brag, but uh, kind of achieved Kim. You know, like, we... Okay. Okay, Mr. Fancy Pants. Go ahead and give us our mana back so we can not miss you. Now, we can just take you out, keeping our mana up, 
until you're paralyzed. And we can just take the loot on the opposite end of the room, which included a torque. Let's see what kind of torque that was. Is it a torque wrench? So we already have an adamantium one. This one, say, like what? Elven? Dwarven? Don't matter. It's useless. That's what it is. It's it's gold. <laughs> that's what it is. It's just more gold for the pile. <laughs> for when we need stuff that we are going to never use, you know? Because uh, hoarding is not a problem for gamers ever in any game whatsoever. Alright, we're going to reset this up. These guys are, of course, going to continue to shoot stuff at us. Yep. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Come on. Yeah, ignore what I'm doing. Totally not about to annihilate you in, like, two seconds. With a spell that honestly should not exist, and I evaporated them. Oh, wait. I just displaced them. 144 gold pieces. That's freaking insane. That's fucking insane, in fact. And that's a Mickey D reference. Uh, may as well make some memes that I've uh, started with. <gasps> Level of experience. Alright. Now, what to put it in? We have so, so many different things we can level. For instance, we can level up our mana. We should probably get the Yogma Infinium at some point. Really finish things off here, though. Because we're now level 19. And, of course, we need a spell target. That'll do. Golem has nothing usable. And, of course, we just regenerated the health we lost from leveling up. And we just regenerated the mana we lost from leveling up. May as well make sure that my spells stay active, you know? You know, just, just keep my stuff topped off. These, you know, these imps right here, these humunculus, as they call themselves, they're just good friends, you know? I would really hate to see something bad happen to them. You know, I would really hate for a chim-driven Tolvani wizard to just run in here and paralyze all these guys and just annihilate them. You know, like, that would be such a terrible thing. And, oh, would you look at that? I already did that. Anyways, we're going to move on now. And it looks like that's a dead end. Of course, Degothur is going to be a full-fledged dungeon all in its own right. I mean, this is going to be one heck of a dungeon. It's probably going to be one of those dungeons where the bottommost corner is actually going to be the next floor, and you have to make your way around and whatnot. But you know, we're gonna we're gonna blow through this stuff. That's what we always do. We always blow through this stuff, and we always make it look easy. Because that's just the Sindar Dreth way. And we found a mark while we are at it. And this here is a no need. Of course, the music is just being creepy as can be. It's trying to... It's trying to act like we're in Daggerfall or something. Ooh, we got a wraith. We got two wraiths. Yeah, that one killed himself. And this one. Oh, just gave ourselves wings. There we go. There we go. Nothing usable. Oh, passage within the volcano or co Hang on. This guy will keep shooting at us, whatever. There we go. The passages within the volcano are covered in soot. The smell of sulfur lingers everywhere. This ghost just decided to fly over and start beating me up. Rude! Oh. 
That sounded like an iron golem. Oh, that is an iron golem. Hello, iron golem. We're going to just nuke you now and make sure that you are just absolute... Wow, that took two. You know, being level 19 is a little OP. Now, this is probably going to screw with our levitation. Didn't in the slightest. Good. And of course, we rarely need to use our flail ever now that we're basically just a battle mage on steroids. And of course, of course we missed that. Give me mana. I'm once again asking for your financial support and mana. And I'm going to snipe you for it. Yeah, I'm sorry, not sorry. You know. Oh, I just gave myself wings again. Such an... Are you kidding me? No, I do not want to print. I want to... Wrath. Wrath all over this humunculus. And I just send our dreath him to death. I send our him to dreath. <laughs> uh, I should probably do some lore videos on some of my characters because they are insane in certain rights. Um, yeah. Because, of course, uh, I haven't even uh, discussed where Sindar Dreth is truly from. I kind of just rolled with him. But, uh, he's an Ashlander of the... of a family that I keep forgetting but remembering sometimes. The Azodurin... <laughs> you know, I make up these Ashlander names and then I find them difficult to pronounce even though I'm the one that makes them. The Resendereen Dureth. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how you pronounce it. And of course, the Resendereen Dureth is the Ashlander family where the Dreths came from, including the Res Redorans, which made a uh, House Redoran. And the crazy part is, these guys uh, were held up on a place in a... Ooh, Hellhound's paralyzed. In uh, the Talbani Peninsula. So, you know, they're, they were hanging out there. In the Talbani Peninsula. Right at the tip. And... Oop. Kill you. And basically... Uh, some stuff went down. They had to split up. The Dreths went and fled all across Tamriel, becoming a more nomadic people. And that's actually the reason why uh, the Dreths are, well, the way they are. You find a good chunk of them that are cruel in nature, criminals. I mean, there's one in prison that just taunts you right at the start of Oblivion. And there's another one that steals Blackbriar Mead. So, you know, good people. But, of course, <laughs> some of them are actually more noble in nature and will actually fight honorably, much like their veteran uh, counterparts that they fought alongside in the past. And there's two wraiths just slapping me with their slapping sticks which is hilarious because they're dead double dead double dead or dead now got these gauntlets that wraith just nuked himself he decided he did not want to are you kidding me get off me I hate when a ghost spawns on top of me. It's the worst thing possible. Yeah, but, uh... The Redorans and the Dreths took their own separate paths. Some of the Dreths actually decided to take over, like, the Redorans and, uh... Others, well... Became criminals. And, uh... Some of the Redorans actually kept some, uh... The Dreth's more demeanor, like the more sadistic qualities that they 
had from hanging around the Talbani for so long. And that's how you wind up with someone like Venom and uh, the leader of House Redoran who hates Outlanders and basically wants to duel you to the death whenever you decide you want to become Nerevar. Now, of course, we are exploring this dungeon. And I feel like we've explored a good chunk of it. But it looks like we really haven't gotten that much further. Looks like there's much more to it. There is an iron golem in this room. All by himself. Just waiting for a butt whooping. You know, the crazy part is, is he's even stuck in a wall. He wasn't even programmed to be him. He's just not that guy, you know? He's just not that guy. He thinks he's that guy, but he... He's just like this Iron Golem. Stuck and stupid. <laughs> like shooting fish in a barrel. Oh wow, and it actually goes through walls. That's actually cool. Like if I shoot all the way here. Oh, that did not even hit me. Unless it did and just didn't parallel. Okay, let me see if I can actually Mephola's Wrath you. Not enough spell points. Oh, uh oh. Okay. We need to restore mana. Golem is paralyzed. I do not have Spell Eater up. That's what's happening. I probably just reflected... Wait. How does that work? Oh, wait. I just equipped Spell Eater again. I didn't do Wrath. There we go. Oh, wait. You know, I did... <laughs> I didn't even notice that I was paralyzed, so that means that means I done damaged myself a good bit. And you know, I said we would probably not need this many mana potions, but look at us. Chugging mana potions like a skooma addict. Like seriously. Like what are we, Leo Raws? <laughs> yeah, that's another family with uh, some interesting qualities, and there are so many iron golems here. I swear, I'm going to be level 20 by the end of this. I'm going to... I swear. Like, by the time I reach Jagar Thorn, I'm already going to be level 20. Like, look at our XP. I think... I think we need, like, what? 9 million just to get to level 20? And we're already getting close to, it, like, 8 million? Like, we're zooming along. And, of course, the... The way the level up calculations work, it it does kind of slow down after a while. So we are going to get more powerful as time gets uh, goes on, and it's going to allow us to just fly through these levels. Like seriously, we're already so freaking powerful. Like we're able to just walk into areas like these and just nope, gone. And then I can just walk up to this guy, and of course, you just saw his buddy get absolutely annihilated from Power Word Scrunch. And yet he's over here like, okay, maybe if I attack him like three more times, he'll ignore me, and he's dead. He's dead just like his buddy. <laughs> and now, just to really annoy them, I can cast Azura's Aid on top of that. And, you know, just taunt them with... Curing my fatigue loss. <laughs> like being like, oh man, that was so tiring. Let me give myself some Kool-Aid and Red Bull. <laughs> now, we are in a different part of the maze. That's basically what this is. Is the maze. Because, I mean, look at this place. And, of course, we're trying to find out where wherever the exit is. So, of course, this does involve us sometimes smacking, sometimes dealing with people like these. 
You know, just just keeping stuff active, really. I guess there's mirror. You know, so stuff like that. You know, you know the little stuff. It's the stuff that matters. You know. Uh, let's see here. Light of Azura. You know, you know, just just the simple stuff. The Fallout's Wrath. And enjoy a nuclear bomb. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you survive that nuclear bomb? Have another. Yeah, like. <laughs> oh, this is such a powerful spell. Get out of my way, ghost. Oh, I'm sorry. Are, are you trying to... Are you trying to use your mana powers to nuke me? Well, guess what? There's a new magic caster in town. And his name is... I missed that. Give me a second. There's a new magic caster in town. And his name is Sindar Dreth. And he's one of the best dead shots in the world. See that? He hit you perfectly. He totally didn't miss his second attempt. And he's even good at melee combat, so you know, really don't mess with him. <laughs> he's a squishy that ain't squishy. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's a battle mage. He can even take on the greatest battle mage of all. Chatter Thorn. And looks like we're starting to get to around 30 minutes, but we can continue. You know, a good bit more. Because, of course, we still have the entirety of Dagother to check out. We we have more Iron Golems. And, I mean, wherever the heavier enemies are, you know, wherever they are, there's, there's progress. Even if it doesn't feel like it sometimes. <laughs> so now, we've made it through this area. And it looks like we're at the far right side of the dungeon. The far bottom right side. So who knows, maybe if I turn this corner, I may be able to find the exit unless it's somewhere else. And Yeah, it was literally just a lava pit and around a corner. There was literally nothing special about down here except treasure. And you know, like, treasure is such a good thing, and I'm just over here sounding ungrateful for treasure. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Like, it just doesn't do it anymore. It's not as useful as something like XP, which I get from literally everything around here. You know, it feels like my speed has been sapped, but I honestly think that's just all the enemies trying to spawn in. Like, yeah, now that I'm clearing up the dungeon, you know, nuking some guys, casting the paralyzed ball here and there, you know, casting a nuke. By the Ten Hells! You know, stuff like that. We have in full inventory. Well, looks like we're here for the XP now. So, you guys, I wouldn't say you're free, more like under new management. New management being you're now a different product, XP. <laughs> you're no longer XP and loot, you're XP. Who shot at me? Oh, we got another one of these guys, I'm just going to armor up in front of him. And Spell Eater. And Azura's Mirror. Give me more mana. May as well keep our wings up. Keep our light up. And he's going to continue to fill our mana up. So we may as well do that. Do that. And just to finish him off, we're just going to nuke him. Go on. Give me a bit more mana. Boop. Yeah. Life of Ghost, everyone. 
you simply haunt a place so some dude can show up, eat all your mana, and nuke you. And of course, full inventory, so we're here for the go. Two iron golems? Okay, I see. What's worse than one iron golem? Two iron golems. Well, what's worse than one nuke? Three nukes! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, that's beautiful. I do love the smell of exploding iron golem in the morning. Well, I guess in the night, since it's... Oh, another iron golem came for the cleansing? Okay. You will join your brethren soon enough. Just you wait. Just you wait. And of course, these guys are just a ton of XP. I mean, look at how much experience we have. We're almost up to 8,000 experience. How much experience do we need to be level 20 again? Well, 8 million experience is what we're getting close to. Of course, we have these two knuckleheads in here. Oh. I didn't exactly, uh, hit myself. We cannot have that many... We cannot be having that many more, uh, potions by the end of this. There ain't no way. After the shenanigans I'm pulling here, there ain't no way we're gonna have potions by the end of this. <laughs> Uh, at least we have the money. At least we have money. That's what matters. Is the money we have made along the way. And of course we just showed this guy who's the better spellcaster and he's already dead. Oh man. You know, it's crazy. Mephold's Wrath does poison damage. Stone golems are made of rocks. What am I poisoning when I hit him with poison damage? Like, is he just exploding from, like, just a nuclear bomb blast of poison, or what? Like, this looks... This is literally the entry. We literally just took one big rotation around the entire dungeon. How do... We circled around the dungeon. Uh, and you know, there's even a secret door right here that I keep missing. It's taunting me. Even though I just saw it on the map, it's, it's literally right over here. I'm literally looking right at it. Here it is. We have a door leading straight to a pits area and another hidden door leading to a useless area lovely well it looks like we just spent like what half an hour just scouring a dungeon doing basically fat gall <laughs> except for killing iron golems as just yeah, like I wonder if uh, that whole passage statement is like you're getting close, and I've been just kind of ignoring it and going past it. And of course, we're getting nuked over here, but it literally does not matter because we're reflecting and absorbing at the same time. And it does look like this passage right here must be the right way, since it's literally telling me, hey. You're getting closer to something. Maybe you should go this way. Maybe you should be heading this way towards... Wait, when? So what is over here? <laughs> it looks like there's actually nothing over here. Why Why is it saying, oh, this passage way has, like, heat emitting from it? And, you know, I never even explored this section over here. I wonder if the exit is over here somewhere. You know, like I've been saying. Like if it's literally just on the opposite end. Hello, Iron Golem. 
How are you today? Do you like paralyzation bombs? Because I have a three for one sale right here. And oh, it looks like you only handle two. Yeah. Figures. Figures. <laughs> Nothing can handle more than two, it seems. Not nowadays. Back then, things could handle three. Many more things. But nowadays, nope. We're too high level for that. Now, of course, heading on back through here. Feels like we're backtracking a little too much, but you know what? It's progress. It is progress because, of course, there's a section over from the looks of it over here. And if I'm not mistaken, what room is it? So if I go south and then, yeah, I need to go all the way around here, head south here, go through this door, and then go west until I reach another door. Looks like maybe a, maybe this door being guarded by a stone golem. You know, not that it is stone golems guarding a secret passage or anything. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not like he's guarding a secret passage or anything that would be important to, uh, yeah, I thought so. Okay, so that's why we couldn't find it earlier, because there was a stone golem just guarding it, and I didn't even notice. Because apparently I'm an idiot like that. Oh well. It's in Dr. S. Fault. I mean, uh, it's not like he has that high of an intelligence. I mean, uh, oh, right, 97. <laughs> He's like the smartest man alive. There are all these stone golems just graveling their throats. That cannot be healthy, you know? Like, I cannot imagine that having a throat that gravelly can be healthy in the slightest. I mean, seriously. Like, and of course we just make him hunchback whenever we, uh, we smack him up like that. And we nuke him. And we nuke him like he's, uh, <laughs> leftovers. <laughs> uh. Oh man, a wraith? A wraith? It's been a while since I've seen one of these guys. Oh, I can still see you instead of loot you. Well, that's strange. Let's fix that. There we go. No, look, we have a another wraith over here. Well, that's strange. All I see is a corpse. <laughs> and a pile of gold. We're going to take the gold since our inventory is kind of full. And it looks like the only thing left to do is really just look through all these sections. I mean... Is there any, like, secret passages over here? No, it looks like we're going to have one of these things. So, of course, crawling through these vents is, like, my least favorite thing to do. So, I guess I will do a speed ahead of me just deleting walls, so I will catch you on the other side. <laughs> Alright, and we have made it to the other side of what looks like a quite an arduous journey. Arduous, arduous, however you say it. And of course we're going to refill our mana. And we're going to reapply Spell Eater just in case. And it does look like we're in a different section, a different room altogether. It, uh, it was quite a loop around. And of course, we do have Spell Eater, so that's a good thing. And it looks like we have found a different section, but I'm not sure if there's much here to be noted. 
There are two wraiths, and I mean, three wraiths. Wow. This room must be important. They, of course, all deleted themselves, but hey. It was an important room somehow, and it does look like there's another passageway over here that you're supposed to go through. And, of course, it doesn't look like there's any, like, tightly fitted walls, because why would Dagother have tightly fitted walls, you know? Like, it's almost like he expects someone to come in here with just wall deletion abilities. And, of course, the area could be here, but, you know, if I were to bet money, if I were to bet Drake's, I'd say somewhere around here would be more likely for the next area, so I am going to do another speed ahead of us deleting walls, so this will be a sec. And we have found a treasure room going through that entire arduous task of deleting all those walls. And we have only like 17 power potions left. And we have been exploring Dagother for quite some time. And we have yet to find out where the exit is, where the next floor is. And of course, deleting walls like this just ain't going to cut it because look at how much we have carved out and how much we still need to discover. I mean, look at all this stuff. I mean, seriously, this is just a place of paths and seeing a door like that really makes me angry. Like that's there the whole time. Well, anyways, we are definitely going to need to look up where the exit actually is because of course, we are running up a run time a good bit, and I'm getting tired. I do also have to start working on that special, so I can actually get that uploaded in time. So I do think this is going to be a good place to end things for now. This has been your bro, Frostbrew, and I think I'll catch you on the next one. <gasps> Later!